Hey everybody, <laughs> what's going on YouTube? EXO coming at you here, feeling great today. A little bit of relief off my shoulders with the Project Towers coming to fruition. Oh my god, we have been putting in over 110 hours into these damn things throughout the past couple weeks with our speaker rings, the new speakers, you know, fixing some of the holes that were in there, getting the new tweeters in there, a whole bunch of stuff. But today, I am going to be putting in the last six of these speakers, the Designer Series 5s. I got them sitting right here, and boy, oh boy, what a night and day difference from our previous uh, drivers here. We had, you know, some mismatched ones on these sides, a little bit bigger than these ones. You know, there were some idiosyncrasies here, but I really loved the way everything sounded. But I can't imagine having all oh, matching drivers. Well, these are roughly about 6 ohms a piece, so we wired each pair up to about 12. So 12 ohms, 12 ohms, 12 ohms, and then 12 divided by 3, the 3 different chambers, is a perfect 4 ohm. So these things couldn't have worked out any better. We have our series straps right here to get all of our uh, resistance to the right levels. And then when we apply our electricity, the impedance will obviously be changing all over the place with music. So to wire these two up in series, we're going to take one of the positives and one of the negatives coming fr to the uh, section of this chamber, and we're going to divide that right in half between each speaker. So one negative is going to the top speaker, and one positive is going to the bottom speaker. And then that's what this little guy is for, to kind of jump uh, the difference in between, to raise the levels up to 12 ohms. So we're going to take this one right here, the positive of this little strap, we're going to connect it onto our Dayton Audio Designer. I'll bend down the prongs just a little bit because the cutout is so damn close to the terminal. I'm going to go ahead and position the terminals on the bottom side so it gives as much slack as we can to the bottom speaker. But before we do that, plug in the negative. Sometimes it can be a little hard to get them on the terminals because they're so tightly fitted. Poke through the series strap, uh, just like this. And then the speaker should plop right in, even though the terminals are really close to the bottom. Check that out. Perfect fitment. Right there. Now, before we did all this, we pre-drilled our holes for our number six stainless steel pan heads. Now, this was really crucial because the last time we did this, we actually pulled up some of the wood without doing the pre-drilling. And we had to go along with some wood glue and some uh, toothpicks. Well, I actually just picked up some... <laughs> some scrap pieces of wood from the demolishing of the of the wall downstairs in Frankenstein. So I had some little chips of birch wood that looked like toothpicks, and I took some wood glue and stuck it in every single hole, including the subwoofers, to make up for the, the, for the MDF that was taken away. I wish I did have my regular screwdriver, but I'll go real slow to make sure everything matches up. And then I don't go all the way. I wouldn't trust this, you know, torquing that in there because I don't want to rip up the freshly pre-drilled MDF hole. So I'm just going to go in real gentle and then hand crank everything. And these speakers were just a tiny bit smaller than the other ones. So that's why you see these speaker rings. Stay tuned for that. I actually had a quarter of an inch thickness and planed them down to an eighth of an inch using a rabbit bit. It took a little bit of finagling, but I ended up doing it on all 12 of them and only broke I think three. Only three of them broke. It added a couple hours of, of work because I had to paint them. I was a little bit pissed off. <laughs> and get this, as I was uh, pre-drilling some of the holes with my drill press, and I wasn't paying attention to my depth uh, setting, so I went to go bring the damn bit closer to the bottom of the table so I didn't have to like crank down the, the release all that much, and I fucking punctured through one of these rings without even looking. I looked down and my freaking rings is snapped in half. I was like, no! I was right about to put everything in there, so it t I had to wait another day and a half. So I had to make the rings from scratch by hand all over again, and then paint them, clear coat them, wait for it to dry, test fit it, sand it back down. So <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit frustrating. Right now we are on the second speaker. Let me pull that out. I've been keeping everything down here with the little dust caps on because when I had to sand all this shit, shit down, Dust went flying everywhere on my new flat screen TV, my computer. I was like, ah, this is why I didn't want to do any refinishing work because I didn't want to have to bother with any of that crap. So let's grab the series strap right here. You can see her coming through the wall. So we're going to have to position this terminal on the top opposite of what we did the last time on the bottom. So let's get this series guy plugged in. 
Now, originally getting these in here was just a little cumbersome, so that's why I had to bend these prongs down so they fit right through it without a hitch, just like that. Perfect. It's going right along, guys. And like I said, if you want a more in-depth version of this type of stuff, be sure to check out the main channel. I, I, I'm telling you, I put in so much freaking work into that. And usually my material is very, well, I try to make it anyways, like pretty cohesive, easy to follow. So that can sometimes put a little bit of extra work. Say if you put your camera up and do all this shit is try to go as fast as you can and the clip's like 10 minutes long, like you have to pick and choose what of that 10 minutes you want to show. And sometimes it's hard, like, man, I, I want to show everything and like the whole details of it all, but in the end, the video will be like freaking 11 hours long. A lot of the time I'm listening to copywritten music when I'm doing my work. So if I were to chuck up that all that raw footage, I would get in trouble. So like, it's not like right now how I'm just like kind of like chilling and talking to you guys one on one. When I'm really in the groove of things, I got Pandora, I got a Bluetooth speaker, and I'm just grooving through. So when I'm editing, I have to like delete the audio tracks and just put in my own music, like royalty free music. Now one thing I actually really do like about these designer series is that they're made to be mounted uh, right on the front of the baffle without any recess. Although we did add that just for a little bit of aesthetics. There's still so much stuff that you can learn uh, that you can kind of correlate with car audio, but in the general scheme of things it is way different. In car audio, you can't necessarily be in more than one place at your listening center. You, when you're in your car seat, that's where you are. Your head is in the same spot. But when you're in a, in a big room like this, sound has different areas of like interest, where it's like, it'll be interested in the corner of your room. It sounds really great. Your subs love the corner of the room. But when you move to the middle of the room, it's almost like the speakers sound way different. It adds a level of complexity, but it also it helps you understand a lot more about the physics of sound once you start researching it, you know what I mean? So here is the other series. We're going to stick with the positive being the series strip. Put that right down. And she's nice and tight. Put this one on the bottom, just like we did last time. Terminal on the bottom, bottom one, terminal on the top. I think it's probably one of my favorite parts is, is all the wiring. Like, I love building, throwing up sawdust, doing all the circles and all that stuff, using tools. But when it comes down to it, like doing 12 volt wiring, doing some speaker wiring, it's always probably my favorite part. Bam. Just like that. And we got the little strap coming down somewhere. Where the hell did it go? Stuck on the polyfill? Yep. Right here. Here she is, coming out of the box. I'm gonna go ahead and take the other speaker real quick before we get too far with screwing everything in because I wanna make sure everything is matching correctly. So I'll grab some of these alligator clips and connect it to the positive and negative just to make sure everything's good because I, I could screw all this in and then be like, oh man, it's, it's backwards. So let's go ahead and click this to the uh, negative and then click this. To the positive. Now I'll put this right down like that, and I'll take my battery wherever the where I just had it. Where the hell my battery go? Pop test. Pop test battery. All right, right here. So then we're gonna go down here inside the cabinet and just connect this to the terminal, the back terminal plate, and these things should move all in the same direction. Well, that's what I'm hoping for, anyways. All right, we got. It seems like everything's pushing in. Nice. Everything's matching. All of these are pushing in, are pulling in, and both of these are pulling in. So those two are, are good to go. I'm telling you, this drill has changed my life. I was always that guy who was stubborn and never really upgraded from his, what was it, like a 120 volt DeWalt, or was it Milwaukee? It's my Milwaukee, my trusty Milwaukee, but this man, holy shit, the Hitachi has opened my eyes. But it can be a little... Uh, it can be a little scary when you have the, the bit on there going into these delicate speakers, so that's why I tend to use this little, uh, well, let me show you. That's why I use this little guide, even though if that circular thing went in there, that would be even bigger hole than that. <laughs> so I really hope you guys are, uh, enjoy this type of video. In the comments below, let me know what you think, and uh, if you enjoy this type of thing, or if you want, like, you know, if you like the more slightly edited versions. Bye, and negative. I cannot wait to test this out. Everything's all planned out. We're gonna have a movie night 
and we're gonna watch that new Full Metal Alchemist movie on Netflix. I mean, I'm not usually a big fan of that type of stuff, but my girlfriend, she says she's really interested in it, and I figured the sound effects will be fucking crazy. Another perk of doing it the way that we did do it, we made the ring separately and drilled each one individually with the speaker in mind. So that way when we get the rings in there, we didn't have to do any pre-drilling, no sizing, it all just went in. Now originally when I built these towers, I think I bought 12 of these right here. I had other plans for doing a center channel, and I wanted to have two of these in the center channel too, so I got six of them. That's why there's only four between both towers. I had an extra two that were going to go in the center channel speaker. Now in this video, I think we're going to do the tweeters next. I don't know, what do you guys say? Here's the tweeters. We went ahead and sanded them down on the YouTube video. I hope you guys uh, watch on the main channel just to get them really close together. The previous tweeters had three screws. These have four, just like our mids. So we're gonna have to position it somewhere like this. So I wanna center the edges of the tweeter in the center of the countersink to make it look like there's a perfect circle around the border. So to do that, I'm just gonna put the center of the sand mark right in the center of this little groove right here where you can see it. So I'll make sure I have the bottom one in there first so the actual seams match up with that too. I would hate to have the top one be perfectly positioned and then the bottom one not be just because of where the top one is. So I'm gonna have them both kind of sitting in here at once while I mark this. Because I like the bottom, oh dang it, kind of keeps kind of falling off the top a little bit, but I like the bottom to be kind of like just like this so I think the top will look good just right there. Right like that. I think that's it. I think that is it. And I want to make sure I have enough meat on the edges of the tweeter to screw into the wood. So I'm going to hold the tweeter right like this. I think that's exactly where I want it. Oh, dang it, I moved it a little. Crap. Right there. That's where I want it. So now I'll hold this tweeter right like in place. Take my drill, and now I'm going to pre-drill this hole. Just, uh, I'm just going to commit to it, make sure everything, make sure the screws are lined up nicely, and I'm just going to commit to it. Here we go. Ready? Pre-drill number one. Ah, oh, I friggin' just nudged it again. Ah, right there. Perfect. Just a little bit to the left. Okay. Let's try that. And I'm just marking these. I'm not uh, drilling through all the way. And you know what? I'm going to do the first one first and then reposition it after that. Okay. For the tweeters, I decided to use half-inch pan heads. I didn't really need to go in all that way with the tweeters. You know what I mean? They don't need crazy amounts of support. So this is how I get all my positioning just the way I want it. So I got that one in there, for sure, and it's not moving anywhere. So I'll take the bottom one now and get that one positioned too. Crap, this is perfect. This is looking good. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that right, I think right there. I think right there is, 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 about, is about perfect. I think so. Hold on, let me, let, me, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. take the tweeter out, blow it off a little bit. I've been working around with the tweeters, so I, I continuously just kind of blow them out. And they're a silk dome, so it's easy to clean. All right. And now we'll put the other bottom tweeter on with just that single screw. And that should really help with positioning. Real good. Bend that one up, push this one in, just like that. Now I'm not plugging these in just because I'm getting them all fitted first. I'm not like wiring them yet, don't want to get ahead of myself. Make sure they all look good first. Screw that in. Okay, so there's the two. Just have two screws on each one, so now you can still see they're in there, but I can kind of position them. I don't know if you can see that, but I can move them around like this. 
So I'll just get the get them to a spot where they start to look beautiful. Right uh right about Right like there. I think that looks good. Hell yeah. So now I'll pre drill these too. Now the top one's all good to go. Get that one screwed in. I won't screw them in all the way because you can still position it just a little bit once you get all four of them in there if you don't tighten it down the biggest because the hole is probably, I don't know, a couple millimeters larger than the diameter of the screw. Gives you a little bit of leeway. You know what I mean? Show you what I mean. See now the, all four screws are in but I can still position it, you know, a little bit of a millimetage around in the circle. So I'll push it over as close to the center as I can and just give her some torque. There we go. That one's not going anywhere. I gotta be careful with the drill. I don't wanna break the plastic. Just like that. Oh, that'll be good for right now. And now the next one, the bottom one, will follow suit. I'm gonna push it up as close to the, ed the bottom edge as I can and just go to town. I think that should, uh, should be beautiful here. Do that right there. Oh shit. Right like that. And I'm actually going to do the top one last. There's this, uh, the top screw has just a, a very little bit of meat because of the four screws instead of three. So I'm going to do that one last, and uh, if we have to add a little bit of something on the back side of it, we will. Maybe just a dab of PL to bite into on the back, you know what I'm saying? And it wouldn't be for really for anything else but uh, for my own yeah, like ADD, uh, excuse me, OCD. Last one for the pre-drill. Yeah, this one has barely any room to go in. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she is just on the edge here. But I still think it was enough to get some, uh, to get something in there. Yeah, she's biting. It just might be on the very edge of that plastic piece, if you know what I mean. See what it looks like. There it is. Not bad. I'll take you off the tripod just to let you see real quick what it looks like. Not horrible, right? Besides the fingerprints. But uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm trying to do this. Oh shit! I gotta get that uh, last one screwed in there. Gotta get that uh, this screw screwed in. Get in there. There we go. A little something like that, guys. Definitely got to clean everything up a little bit, but there she goes, guys. So, I think I'm going to let this video chill for what it is, guys. I just wanted to give you just a basic rundown of what it's like to do all this stuff. Uh, I guess one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just me and you. And it, it just, you know, goes to show how much work really goes into editing to make a video a little bit more easy to watch. Because, I mean, I know this is nice and all just to have this, you know... Uh, unedited type of stuff but as far as entertainment goes it does feel good to have some stuff pop up like some nice step by step some title work some transitions and to have the pace a little bit faster for me I find that just a little bit more entertaining but let me know your opinion in the comment section below as we get the rest of this finished off for the main channel we're gonna stuck in these two these two subs and all those two subs so definitely lots of stuff to look forward to guys on the main channel so Thanks for watching. This is EXO coming at you guys, busting ass. It's been a couple weeks just doing this, so thanks for, you know, bearing with me here as we get the Frankenstein project going, the Tower project going, and huge thank you to Parts Express, Jeff, Dayton Audio, and just, you know, being able to participate in something this awesome really just, it makes me happy, so happy. Huge smiles all the time. So, all right, guys, until the next video, this is EXO signing out.
I will talk to you then.